The Lord is King of the universe. God is King. He loves every one of us. Welcome to the TOG Insider. King of the universe. Brought to you by the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ in Philadelphia. In each Insider program, we will take you behind the scenes of the truth of God. We'll visit our temples and the people that make the truth of God happen. Hello, everyone. This is again the Truth of God Insider. Uh, my name is Brother Dan Thompson. I'm the media director of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you know, the Truth of God Insider is a program that's designed to take you a little bit behind the scenes of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ to show you things that are happening that you normally would not see. Uh, in this particular edition, we're going to be talking to one of our ministers from overseas, uh, actually is from someplace in the Caribbean. I'll let him introduce himself. His name is Minister Gary Robinson, and we're going to have a short conversation with him. Greetings, Minister Gary. Greetings, Dan. Uh, can you tell us uh, where you're from in the Caribbean? All right, I'm from Balaclava in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. It's about two hours from Kingston, two hours from Montego Bay. So, Brother Gare, tell us uh, a little bit about your upbringing in Jamaica and uh, what role did church have in your life, in your upbringing? My upbringing, I was brought up uh, in the church, so to speak. You know, my, my mother and father being Christians, you know, as we know it, you know, they, they were committed. Um, the church that we were in was, my father was the, bishop, was the elder at the time. The church was basically handed over to him um, by my mother's uncle, Bishop Fritt. So after he passed, my father um, took charge of the church. And, you know, I have to follow them to church every Sunday as a young man growing up. You know, so we were taught Christian principles. Um, basically all my life, my, my younger years, you know, so we had to go to church, we, we, anything that is to be done in the church, then I would participate in that as a young man, cleaning the church, cutting grass, that sort of stuff. So <laughs> the Christian principles were, were instilled in me, you know, so we, we couldn't go out and drink and party and all that, even though as, as a child, you know, you still sneak out <laughs> And, and go with the boys and stay out a little late and at the shop you might be playing dominoes and you know that sort of thing but we didn't it wasn't we, we couldn't do it like freely you know so uh, for the most part the Christian principles were instilled in us we didn't grow up having going out and having girlfriend drinking and smoking that sort of thing sounds good Gar can you uh, tell us where you were baptized and when you were baptized. All right, so I was baptized at the same church in Bogue, St. Elizabeth in 1991. And, um, you know, when you get a break from boarding school in the summer, you just want to let loose and, you know. So it was that time I was at a party, you know, and, um, you know, having a good time. But then there was a convocation being held at the church in Bogue in St. Elizabeth. My brother came from overseas with his fiancée at the time, who insisted that she wanted to be baptized in Jamaica by my father. You know, so she came to be baptized. Um, so my brother rented a car. Uh, my other brother was driving, but I could do a little driving, you know. So I, I, I decided that I want to drive the car back from church. So I went with him that Friday night to church just to drive the car back home. And while sitting there, and my father was, you know, preaching, he was saying that, imagine God give you breath, God give you life, and you use the life that God give you to serve the devil. He said, is that fear? And I, I didn't look at it like that before, never thought about that. You know, and that night, it, it really drive home to me. I said, oh my God, look at what I'm doing. I'm using the breath and life that God gave me to serve the devil. And right there, I was convicted and I decided I was going to get baptized the Sunday. That was the Friday night. Nobody knew that I was going to get baptized because my sister-in-law was going to get baptized the Sunday. So Sunday morning, I packed my clothes and brought it um, to the river. When my father baptized my sister-in-law, he was in the water asking, are there anyone else? You know, and I stepped forward. 
and everybody was shocked, you know, but I was ready. I was ready, and from that time, you know, I've been striving. Yeah, that sounds good, Gary. That sounds uh, very good. Can you tell us then, um, when did you first hear about Pastor Jennings and the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, so I, I uh, got to know about Pastor Jennings, I think in the, in the early 90s, mid 90s, um, when Mother Thompson, your mother then, um, used to tell my mother to listen to this preacher on the shortwave radio station that was coming through the Caribbean. And she always asked me to find the station, you know, you know, I'm always there trying to find the station. But at that time I was annoyed sometimes, you know, I said, why every time Mother Thompson was telling you to find this thing? Because you could hardly hear it. It was a lot of disturbance on the, on the, sig with the signal, you know, but I remember hearing the song, walk in the light and that sort of thing, you know. So after a while, there's a brother, Alston Hibbert from Jamaica. He was in contact with Pastor Jennings I don't know how he got um, knowledge of him, but he was in contact with him. He used to attend, he attended the church in Bogue. So he, he, show, he gave me a journal, the Truth of God journal that they had at the time. And, and in the journal, there was a message, because the, the, the messages used to be written out in the journal that pastor preached, you know. So I read a message that he preached, and the message was so riveting, just by reading the message. It was so riveting that I said, no, I need to hear more. So I asked him if he had tapes. Okay, he wrote Pastor James and got tapes. So he had tapes and I listened a few tapes and it, it was awesome because I, I, I could hear this strong message coming forth. But then it, it sounded like it was an old man, you know, because he preached and coughed a lot at the time. I think at the time he had, he had new Mona. And I said, wow, this old man sounds sound good, you know, but one day I went to Mother Thompson's house and I, in the living room, there was a, a photograph of Pastor Jennings and I look at it, I say, a Pastor, Pastor Gino Jennings. And it was a young, young man. And I asked Mother Thompson, how old is he? I think at the time was about 33, 34. And I said, my God. And I said, but if this young man, this young man preaching so strong, and I, I was encouraged the more to say, if it is this young man preaching this holiness doctrine so strong, what about me? You know, so from that time, I was encouraged to say, listen, if Pastor Jennings being so young can hold it, I, I, can, I can walk, I can follow it as a young man. So that, that's how I, um, I get in touch with the message. Brother Gary, you mentioned the, the riveting nature of Pastor Jennings' preaching. Um, t tell us a bit more about that. You know, how did it sound to you? What really grabbed you about his, his teaching? All right, that, there, there's, there's a difference in the message. And the difference is, coming up in the church, you, you hear about holiness. But that's basically what it was. You, you heard about it. But you, you didn't hear holiness taught. You know, what is holiness? How to be holy? You know, so listening to Pastor Jennings, he, he, he explained what it is to be holy, how to submit to God, how to walk to please God. You know, because I didn't understand that the, 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 the word, the scriptures, we should live by the scriptures. It's basically the manual for our life. You go to church and you know, you, you, you hear a preaching, you hear a word and you go to church and that's it. But I didn't understand that living for God was a daily walk. It was a daily life, you know, and listening to Pastor Jennings teaching, it tells you how to be holy. Certain things that we used to do in the church, we used to have um, programs like, I mean, convention, but during that time we have programs where you act plays and all of that. I was acting in the church, you know, I was one of the biggest actors, you know, act like I am a drunken man and get shot up and then got, got saved, rolling paper and smoking, you know, in acting. And I didn't know that those things were wrong, you know, I didn't know that those things were wrong, you know, so having things like Christmas, and we say we didn't believe in Christmas, but then we tell people Merry Christmas, you know, so we'll be driving through the community and, and, and saying Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and yet we say we don't do Christmas, you know, so listening to pastor give me an understanding to know that we have to follow the scripture as it written. I didn't know that we have to have scripture for what we do, you know, even, even, even just preaching. I didn't even know that a person have to be ordained to be a preacher and given permission to preach that sort of thing. I thought they just 
take it up and just preach. So listening to the doctrine of holiness, it, it opened your eyes to the Word of God. You know, you have to have chapter and verse, chapter and verse. I did not know that the scripture should be the basis of our life, you know, if you say you're following Christ. So it, it is a great enlightenment on how to live and what God wants us to do, as opposed to just going to church and saying you're a Christian. You know, so it, it, it really zoom in on the scriptures, you know, so that, that's, that's the major difference. Um, it it teaches you how to walk. You know, teach you how to walk as a young man, as a middle age. Teach you how to deal with each other, how to treat a woman, the whole ropes. You know, so it, 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 it was very riveting and it was very deep in terms of you can feel attached to God by the word. Good, Gary. I want to sort of transition a little bit more to um, when my father, Elder Thompson, passed in 1999. And... Um, Pastor Jennings was the presiding minister at his burial, and uh, other ministers were there also, but that may have been the first time that you actually met Pastor Jennings in person. Um, there was somewhat of an unusual scene at the time of the burial at the actual burial site, which I think you witnessed. Uh, what did you think about that particular encounter with Pastor Jennings and the other ministers? Yes, Dan, well, that time when we, I first met Pastor Jennings, that was something. Um, I mean, when, when your father passed and we heard how the burial would be performed, burial, because back in Jamaica, we didn't have burial, we have funeral. You go to church, bring the dead in the church, and you have all this type of ritual thing, then you go and bury. So when I heard that First Church do, doesn't do, don't do um, funeral, only burial, then I was, I was anticipating that to see what's going to happen because I've never seen that before but I was so excited and I was hooked to the scripture my understanding was open and start opening to the scripture so I accepted that you know so I was um you know just waiting to see what happened and then Pastor Jane was going to come I was going to meet him for the first time so I was very ecstatic about that now when he came and um I mean people were were already cussing you know, to say how are they going to bury the man like a donkey and all that type of thing. People were actually planning that they were going to stone pastor and all of that, you know. So I was at work and, um, you know, the time of the burial was announced. So I, I got some time off from work to go to the burial. By the time I reached to the site, pastor was coming back from the grave, you know. So it took about maybe 15 minutes, I'm told. You know, he went there and prayed and told the people what it's all about. Mr. Felton, I know many of you may be used to seeing the funeral, which is a lot of custom and tradition. But uh, as the scripture teaches, the Bible talks about Jesus when everything written of him was fulfilled, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. This is what we in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ believe in doing. Funerals is a custom. Funerals are something that have never been in the scriptures. So we don't want you to think it's strange because we don't funeralize one of the brother ministers of the temple. So he said, okay, um, Elder Thompson has passed, so we want to reorganize things. So he's, he, he started to ask, the first question he asked him, and he says, who did Elder Thompson leave in charge? You know, like that's a Brompton church. One minister was saying, he left me in charge. The other said, no, he's, he left me in charge. And the minister said, yeah, he left me in charge because he gave me the book. No, this book was uh, the building fund book, <laughs> you know. So there was a tug of war about who was left in charge. So Pastor James realized that, oh, there's a problem here. So he started to ask the minister. He said, um, you are evangelist, right? He said, yeah. He said, who are they in you? Um, well, I don't know who are they in you. Yeah, I come in on the same. Same, so the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. So you wasn't ordained? I was appointed. Lay hands on me and all that. Yeah. What is that name? I was being laid on me and prayed for me and all that. I was a deacon. He died. I was a deacon. You ordained him a deacon? Yeah. So when did you become an elder? Five years as an elder. Yeah, five years as an elder. Where is that? Did he lay hands on you as an elder or as a deacon? Yes. 
Yeah. 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 No, as a deacon. Oh, so, so no one laid hands on you as an elder. Oh, so Harry laid on you as a deacon. Yeah, I but, but appointed the elder. How did that, how, what's that? I don't know. Appointed as a, he was ordained a deacon, appointed an elder. So Pastor James will say, well, if you're not ordained, you can't tell the people that you're not you are ordained. So go back to church and tell the people that you are not an elder. And I was standing there looking, I was saying, but this man, he came in the country, he don't know the people, he don't know these men, and he's there just, you know, with this authority, who ordained you? Tell him that you're not that, tell him that you're not that. And I was, I said, my God, you know, it's like I was saying, what man of man is this? You know, he was just small among a group of men, and there are stones all about, the women are there making noise based on how the burial was done, and he was just unafraid. And right there and then I saw the power of God. You know, I, 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 could, see, I could see the scriptures unfolding and get an understanding of what it ought to be. It was right then my understanding was open to the whole ordination and church set up and all that, like a light burst in my head. You know, and from that time I realized that, you know, if you are in God, you can have that, you can stand unafraid as long as God is with you. Because people were there talking, making noise, saying what they were going to do at the burial. Pastor James just did what he had to do and just, just walk off and say, bye, see you all. <laughs> and I was like, what just happened? <laughs> you know, so it, it, it really had an impact on me from that time. Because he came in the country, don't know anybody, maybe just you and Mother Thompson, don't know these men. And in a remote area, and he was able to command that respect and authority without fear, you know. So that, that did something to me until this day, you know. It, it, it did something to me until this day. So I, I witnessed the power of God then, yes. Yes, Gary, I, I certainly remember that occasion when my father was being buried and certainly the command the pastor had of, the, of that particular scene. It's, uh, it's something to witness. Um, but speaking of the power of God and your authority to be given to Pastor Jennings, um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen and continue to witness uh, the effect of the message of holiness in Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about that effect that you've been seeing over the last uh, decade or so, or perhaps even longer? Yes, Dan, I, I'd say that <laughs> the message of holiness has gripped the Caribbean, literally gripped the Caribbean. I mean, everywhere that it is preached in the Caribbean. You know, people are giving up and running out of their churches. Um, you know, there was a little apprehension um, uh, at the beginning because many, many of the people there, they are used to so many wicked, deceptive preachers from overseas. You know, so they here in Pastor Jennings, many of them at the beginning were skeptical. You know, is this another con artist? You know, but with the persistency of the message, and uh, the message didn't change. He continued to preach holiness and con continued to pound the gospel. People start to get the understanding that this man is different. And then they start to see the manifestation of the ills that he's preaching against their church, in their church, you know. So they realize, and their understanding start to open to the scriptures because they, they, they were getting just what the, the preachers were saying, but now they are getting chapter and verse. So now they start to cling on to the word and realize that what this man is saying is the truth because it is written in the scripture and it is now being explained. So there has been a mass exodus in Jamaica and the Caribbean from the false churches. People are coming in, they are coming in. They, we, we've gone to Trinidad, we've gone to Barbados, to Guyana, to Antigua, to Grenada, to Cayman Islands, St. Lucia, you know. So the, the, the people are giving up. They realize that this is the message because it is in scripture. Now they can relate to it. And they just realize plainly that these preachers have been conning them over the years. You know, so the, Carib the Caribbean now has been very, very receptive. You know, the basket is full and overflowing, you know. So people have, have um, awoken to the truth and, you know, they have clinged on to it. 
There was some controversy in Jamaica when Pastor went down there some years ago around his preaching, and um, I think some of this was actually written up in the newspaper. Uh, can you describe some of that briefly for us? Oh, I believe that's the situation with, um, with Vegas um, a, couple, a couple of years ago. Um, Vegas, uh, Pastor Jennings taught a message about women adorning themselves and all that, you know, how they, women and men, how they should dress. And um, somebody took a little clip of, of the message uh, when he was talking about women looking like whores and all that, and it went viral, you know. And um, <coughs> Vegas, one of the artists back then, he he, um, he he spoke about the message and said, Pastor, I have no right to say that and all that, and you know. So Pastor, we were having a convention, so Pastor said, okay, he want to meet with them, you know, for them to answer. And another, I think it was two other women, women preachers, who spoke about it. So he decided that he wanted to meet with them in the convocation. Well, the two women, they backed out, but Vegas decided that he's gonna take up the challenge. So he came, we gave him an opportunity to come and to, to answer what he was talking about on social media. And um, he and Pastor went into a discussion. And uh, when Pastor realized that it wasn't going anywhere, you know, because he wanted to use the stage, you know, to just have his own way and to push his agenda. You know, so Pastor decided that he, he's not going anywhere, so he's going to shut it down. And um, Pastor asked me to, because I invited him, uh, Pastor asked me to ask him to, to sit down. So I told him, I said, Vegas, this is not going anywhere. You're going to have to do it another time. Um, so I asked him to sit down. He said, no, I'm not sitting down because I'm already here. So he decided that he's going to be defiant and stand there and not moving. So Pastor wanted to carry on the service, so he had to get him out. So he asked the brothers to escort him out, <laughs> usher him out, you know, so the brothers um, took him out, you know, so that it, it, it blew up on the every radio station and television station there for about two weeks. You know, the people were calling us for interviews and all that to find out what happened and all that, you know, so even though <clears throat> they meant it to be a negative thing, it was a, po a positive thing for the church because we, we, we were promoted by radio station and television station for two weeks. And we did more baptism then than previous years. You know, and from that time, baptisms have been skyrocketed because persons who didn't know about Pastor Jennings, they, kn they, they now know about him because of that viral clip and that situation with Vegas. So you can't do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Thank you, Brother Gary. We certainly thank you for being here on this The Truth of God Insider. There you have it, uh, another conversation with uh, one of our ministers, in this case, uh, Elder uh, Gary Robinson from uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, we want you to stay tuned to this, The Truth of God Insider, for another edition in the future when we'll go into other aspects of what's happening here at the First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. like to advertise on the TOG Insider, please call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358. Once again, for advertising on the TOG Insider, call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358. Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is God. The Father, Son, and